a marine biology PhD student, Chloe, is working hard in her lab, inspecting something under a digital microscope. Her boss Andrea enters the lab and asks her why they're both working on a weekend, and Chloe excitedly tells her about the new samples that have come in, and that she couldn't wait to start work on them. Contaminants are down 40% from last year's specimens, and they have an additional six whales accounted for in the marine protected area. That means the proposed conservation efforts they've put in place are working. Andrea hands her a brochure for an opportunity that the lab has, for one of the students to go and see orcas in their natural habitat, and observe the migration patterns. She says Chloe would be her first choice because she's wildly curious. Chloe protests that she doesn't know anything about orcas, because it's not her field of study, but Andrea thinks it will be a good chance for her to learn more about different species, and could give her the field experience she needs to complete her thesis and perhaps even a discovery that would merit her getting a national scholarship. Chloe thinks Andrea has her head in the clouds, but agrees in principle to the trip. However, when Andrea mentions the timing, Chloe says that she can't do it, because she's moving in with her boyfriend Marcus that week. They're both PhD students and exceptionally busy, and she thought they were growing apart, but Marcus told her he wants to talk to her that evening, and she found a receipt for a key cutter in his car, so she's pretty sure he's going to ask her to move in so they can spend more time together. Andrea shrugs, disappointed, but tells Chloe to let her know if she changes her mind. Not long after, Marcus comes in, and Chloe stops what she's doing, happy to see him. He's wearing an expensive suit and looks like he's come from a business meeting. She tells him about the results and he's happy for her although he clearly has no idea what she actually studies, and gets the name of her field wrong. She smiles, though, pleased that he's at least making an effort to try and remember. He offers her a sandwich which he brought for lunch, their usual tradition, and begins to talk about how they haven't had much time together recently. Chloe is excited, imagining this is going to be the moment when he asks her to move in with him. He offers her a set of keys and she's overcome with anticipation. However, he leads her to another part of the same building, and shows her into an office which he's rented, a space in between his lecture hall and her lab. It's a shared workspace. Chloe is instantly extremely deflated, but tries to hide her disappointment. Marcus gets the wrong end of the stick and thinks she's freaking out because it's too much of a commitment, and tells her in a heartfelt way that he knows it's a lot but he thinks they're ready for the step forward. Chloe doesn't even know how to respond, and when he asks her if she can move her stuff there on Monday, she tells him that unfortunately she's going to be on a research trip the following week. She calls Andrea and secures the position, realizing that her perception of her and Marcus's relationship is far removed from his, and she needs some space to think. The following Monday, Chloe flies out to the Pacific Northwest and drives down to her lodgings. Her car gets stuck in the mud on the coastline, though, and she's forced to stop. She's got no GPS signal, so she takes out an ordnance survey map and starts looking around, trying to see which way she needs to go. A car approaches on the muddy road, and seeing a puddle, she prepares herself to get splashed by covering her body with the map. The car stops before it reaches the puddle, though, and the confused driver, a handsome man, gets out asking her if she's okay. Embarrassed, she folds up the map and says she's fine, and he comments on her car, a smart car, saying they shouldn't rent them to tourists in this place because they can't take the trails. Indignantly, Chloe informs him she's a scientist, not a tourist, and she asks for the environmentally friendly vehicle. She says she's headed to the local B&B, and the man says he knows of it, and would be happy to give her a lift there if she likes, or she could wait for the tow truck and it'd be a couple of hours. Chloe reluctantly accepts his help. In the car, there's an awkward silence between them, and then they both try to introduce themselves at once. Chloe explains that she's a marine mammalogy student from Miami. The man introduces himself as Ben Winters and asks if she's there for the orcas, and she confirms that she is. She talks about how interested she is in finally seeing one in the wild, because up until now, it's not been her area of study and she hasn't had the opportunity. He smiles and says she's going to love Cable Cove, the small town that's their destination. When they arrive, he takes her to his business, a shop called Winter's Whale Watching Tours. Chloe is indignant that he let her talk about orcas the whole car ride without once telling her that he runs tours, and he smiles and says he liked hearing her talk about them so enthusiastically. She takes her luggage with a goodbye to Ben, and heads over to her B&B, spying a seal lounging on the dock on her way over and grinning excitedly. The B&B proprietor is a lovely middle-aged woman named Mary, and she's happy to meet Chloe, touched that she's come all the way out from Miami to study the whales. Chloe tells her a little about the work she's there to do, and Mary gives her a tour of the premises, setting her up in her favorite cabin right out on the ocean. The view is spectacular and Chloe can't believe how much she already loves the town. The cabin is large and well-decorated, with a working fireplace and a wooden porch that leads down to the sea. Mary leaves Chloe to herself, and while checking out the view, Chloe spots a whale nearby, just seeing the tip of its fin and blowhole emerge from the water. She fetches her binoculars and then runs to get her camera and follow it. She bumps into Ben on the path, who recognizes her and lets her run ahead of him with an exasperated shake of his head. He greets the seal she saw earlier as he walks past it, its name is Sammy, and follows her panicked run out to the dock. 
The whale has gone, though, by the time she reaches it. Ben helpfully informs her she was about 10 seconds too late. Undeterred, Chloe decides to catch up to the pod herself. She goes to her boat, a small motorcraft owned by the university. Ben is surprised she has a boat of her own to use, and asks her if she knows how to operate a watercraft. He asks if she's got everything she needs, and if she's checked the wind speeds, nautical forecast, and tides. Not wanting to appear unprepared, Chloe grins and affirms she knows exactly what she's doing, even though it's patently obvious she doesn't. Amused by her insistence, Ben shrugs and walks away, leaving Chloe without any idea how to operate the boat. Before she can even get started, another craft zooms past her and splashes her with its wake, and she screams, covered in freezing water. Back at the B&B, Mary wraps her in a towel comfortingly while Chloe wails that she's lost a whole day, and she didn't know the ocean would be so cold here. Mary laughs and says she's going to ask Ben Winters if he can take her, since he knows more about the orcas than anyone else in town. But Chloe refuses, explaining awkwardly that she's already refused his help. Mary chuckles and smiles, and goes to fetch some maps instead. Just then, though, Ben comes in and sees Chloe wrapped up in the towel. He greets her, surprised that she's already back, and she admits she didn't quite make it out onto the water. Mary brings over the map for Chloe, and a drink for him. Ignoring Chloe's protests, she asks Ben if he'll give the girl a crash course on the area, and he happily sits down. Chloe swallows her embarrassment and listens intently as he explains the history of the cove, and the condition of the ocean around it. Then when he begins to talk about the orcas, she cuts in with her own knowledge about their migratory patterns at the time of year, showing him on the map the areas where she's intending to conduct her research. He's impressed by her knowledge. Mary comes over and asks how they're getting on, and Chloe learns that Mary hosts an annual dock party every year around this time. It's going to be on the weekend, and it's a big deal in the local area, the biggest annual event which raises money for the town's conservation fund to protect the orcas. This is their busiest time of year, as tourists flock in to see the whales. Chloe remarks that Ben must be very busy with his tours, and he shrugs and says the first few days are always not so bad. Mary takes the opportunity to suggest that he takes Chloe out while he has the chance to. He teases her by saying he doesn't think she needs help, but she sees the chance to swallow her pride and tell him that actually, a local guide would be nice. He grins and says he'd love to help her. Ben takes her to the dock and introduces her to two of his friends, Adrian and Shauna, a married pair of fishermen who reside in their boat. They welcome Chloe to Cable Cove and tell her that she's definitely met the best man to help her out on her trip. Ben waves away the praise and they proceed to his boat, which is significantly larger than Chloe's little craft. She takes out her camera equipment, explaining to him how it all works, as he sets up and gets ready to launch. She's trying to attach a camera to the side when she almost falls in, and Ben has to grab her and steady her. He suggests she finds her sea legs before she installs anything, and for once, Chloe agrees with him. They head out of the harbor, Ben expertly piloting the boat to where they sighted the orca pod earlier. Chloe is having the time of her life, looking around excitedly. Ben smiles as he tells her that the whales are definitely aware that humans watch them for entertainment, and when they're ready to be seen, they'll put on a show, some of them have really big personalities. Chloe's amazed that he knows them so intimately, and jumps up when she sees orcas jumping out of the water. Ben introduces the biggest whale as B-16, or Romeo, as he calls him. He explains there are over 30 whales in his pod. Chloe is overwhelmed, watching the underwater camera as Ben pulls them in closer, she says it's like a dream come true. Ben takes them back in and explains more about the resident pods he knows about. They have three, Bravo, Romeo's pod, Delta, and Echo. Delta has the oldest orca, Granny, who's over 100 years old. They have really strong family bonds and a matriarchal structure which means Granny basically runs the whole show. Chloe asks about Echo Pod, and Ben says he hasn't seen it in a while, there's only nine of them. But he isn't worried, he's sure they'll come. At her cabin, Chloe marks up a map with the locations of the orcas they saw. The next day, Chloe has a call with Andrea, who's seen her footage from the day before. She reminds her that unless she finds the echo pod to observe their behaviors, her research will be inconclusive, so she needs to make sure she sees those whales before the end of the week. Chloe bites her lip, worried, but assures her supervisor that she's going to do all she can to find the answers, around why the echo pod hasn't yet come home. She's looking into their food sources, thinking that potentially that might be the reason why they're staying away. She heads down to the dock to find Shauna, and asks her if she's seen the echo pod while out fishing. Neither she nor Adrian have seen Echo either, but they assure her that the salmon run is the healthiest they've ever seen, so there's definitely no food shortage. It seems her initial hypothesis was incorrect. Chloe heads to the shore and starts taking samples of the rocks, sand, and vegetation, and measuring the acidity and temperature of the water. Nothing, though, comes out with any peculiar results. She's perplexed by the issue when Ben comes into the B&B &B and asks how it's going. He says he put out a call to the other whale watchers in the region and none of them have seen Echo either, the pod is definitely missing. 
Chloe wants to get samples of the local algae to see if there's been any mutation in the phytoplankton, which might be a signifier of some sort of shift in the local conditions. Ben says he knows a good spot to get a sample, and takes her down to the mouth of the river. Chloe screams at the temperature of the water around her feet, but Ben is unconcerned, and laughs at her Floridian intolerance to the cold. She takes the sample she needs, and on the way back, Marcus tries calling her. She's deciding whether to answer when Ben asks if she wants to go and get some food at Mary's. She thanks him, but says she wants to go and defrost. He departs with a smile, and Chloe stares longingly after him, wishing she could go and have lunch, even as she answers Marcus's video call. Marcus admits he's taken up more than half of the office with his stuff, and shows her around it, but she's not interested, still watching Ben's retreating back. Marcus says he knows that they're on different wavelengths sometimes but he really hopes that this shared office will bring them together, and Chloe doesn't have the heart to tell him that she's not in love with him anymore. She nods, holding back her feelings, and when he hangs up, she looks again at the direction Ben left in, knowing that deep down, Marcus isn't what she wants. The following day, it's pouring with rain. Mary arrives with a raincoat on and delivers her some breakfast, and Chloe says that unfortunately, it looks like her study will be put on pause due to the weather. Mary winks and says that she might just have to get creative. Later, Chloe is napping under the porch when Ben arrives at her cabin, explaining that there's a real howler out there, but no storm will last forever. He notices she's down, and asks her about it. She says the algae samples came back totally clean and she's got no leads on Echo at all. Ben decides to take her to the local museum to inspire her. There's a whale skeleton there, and a ton of artifacts and heirlooms belonging to the cove's residents. She's really enthusiastic, inspecting all the bones and pieces of history that have washed up on the shore over the years. Ben gazes at her as she inspects each piece, happy to see her smiling again. He says he just hopes that it inspires the next generation of whale watchers. He also asks if he can have access to her underwater footage, as he's never had the opportunity to see the whales from that perspective before, and she tells him she'll send it all over for him to use for his marketing. As the storm's mostly cleared, Ben decides to take Chloe up the coast a little, where she might be able to see the whales from the shore, since it's too late to take the boat. They hike up to the viewpoint, and he explains the scenery as she examines it from her binoculars. He shows her the gateway to the sound, where the orcas come in from the ocean, and says that Echo should be arriving through it any day now. He asks if Chloe can stay a little longer, in case they don't arrive this week. But sadly, Chloe looks at the ground and tells him she can't, because she'll miss her application deadline for the national scholarship that Andrea wants her to go for, and because she's supposed to move in with her boyfriend. Ben is startled, but recovers quickly, saying quietly that it sounds like a good reason to go back. Chloe feels awkward, explaining that it's not really moving in, but Ben changes the subject and asks about the scholarship instead. She says she probably won't get it, but if she did, it would mean she could spend more time out there doing research, maybe even in Cable Cove itself. He looks down at her, his eyes shining, and says he'd really like that. Chloe doesn't know how to reply. The moment is interrupted by the appearance of a humpback whale, which Ben points out to her. She eagerly looks through the binoculars, then screams in joy and jumps up to hug Ben as the whale leaps out of the water. After a moment, she lets him go awkwardly, both aware of how close they just were and feeling the romantic tension. The next day it's very cold, and Ben explains that the weather is changeable at that time of year, but the following day the forecast looks clear, and they should be able to go out on the water all day together. She looks at him quickly, and he corrects himself, saying he meant with the whales. Just then, though, Mary comes into the B&B with terrible news. The storm caused a tree to fall in the woods which has flooded the road into town. None of the tourists will be able to get into Cable Co for the dock party that weekend. It's really bad news for all the local businesses, and for the orca conservation effort which relies on the money from the party. Chloe asks if it's possible to get to the next town by boat, and they could maybe pick up the tourists. Ben shows them the map and says there's a dangerous pass that most boats don't like to go down, but that it's possible even if it's risky. Mary says it's the only way they'll get everyone into Cable Cove, and Ben agrees to give it their best shot. Ben pilots them out to the pass and shows Chloe where they need to go, but the tide isn't right yet, so they weigh anchor and set up a hydrophone to listen to the whales communicating. Ben mentions that he has arranged for Chloe to use the museum as a research lab. They see some whales coming in, and Chloe is delighted to realize that the Echo Pod has finally come home. They successfully collect the tourists and bring them into town, and buoyed up by finally locating the missing pod, Chloe seizes the moment and asks Ben if he wants to go to dinner with her as a thank you for all his help. They sit on the couch at Mary's, which is now packed with people. Ben is marveling at Chloe's footage and photographs, commenting on how talented she is. He says he showed all of it to his sister who teaches kindergarten, and the kids loved it, because Chloe sees the whales in such a special way, and that's evident in her photography. She smiles at him, feeling blown away by his frank praise and their clear connection. Adrian and Shauna arrive, sitting opposite them and saying they've never seen Mary's place so full. Mary comes over to take their orders, and Ben explains to Shauna and Adrian that they found the echo pod. They're in the strait, but haven't come into the sound yet, which is strange for the time of year. 
The boys go and help Mary with the drinks, and Shauna takes the chance to tell Chloe that she's happy to see Ben doing so well. He hasn't looked so happy for a long time, not since his ex left town. Chloe's face falls at her words, wondering what could have happened between them and reminded that she, too, will be leaving town at the end of the week, and she'll have no future with Ben. At her cabin later, she pins the echo pod on her map and reviews her footage, trying to understand why the orcas are staying out of the sound. Ben walks past her cabin and she runs out to catch him, asking him why he's out so late. He leads her over to a campfire by the shore, offering her some hot chocolate, and says she needs to see for herself. They sit beside each other, and she asks him what she's looking for. He points up into the sky, and they see the aurora borealis right over their heads. She's awestruck. Ben says he would never want to reside anywhere else, that he tried the city out for a few months but it wasn't for him. This feels like a place where miracles can happen. Chloe sighs and asks him if he's ever been somewhere far away, but it feels like home. They gaze into each other's eyes under the northern lights, and both are beginning to feel that there's something much more than friendship between them. The next day, Chloe is reviewing her photos of Echo Pod and discovers that one of the orcas is pregnant. That might be why they've stayed out of the sound. She calls Andrea immediately to share her hypothesis, and her supervisor agrees that it merits further research. Chloe shares her idea to set up a livestream of the underwater footage, following the orcas and their habits, so she could set up a website and take donations directly from people who want to help the preservation effort. Andrea says that if she applies for the National Scholarship, she could definitely make it a reality, and Chloe agrees she's going to apply. Chloe runs over to Ben's to tell him the good news, but he's out on the boat. There's a testy girl waiting outside, who says her name is Shannon, and tells Chloe that if she sees Ben, she should let him know she's there waiting for him. She seems uptight and is dismissive of the whales, so Chloe instantly takes a dislike to her. She goes to the museum to fill in her application grinning at the photos she's taken of the pregnant whale, Betty. Ben finds her not long after, and she tells him the news. He's incredibly excited, pacing up and down, saying he'll have to let the other whale watchers know, and put out an alert in case anything goes wrong. Chloe shares in his enthusiasm and has to calm him down. She also hesitantly mentions Shannon, but Ben waves a hand, saying she just stopped by to drop back some of his stuff, and that she's very much his ex-girlfriend. Chloe seems relieved, although she still hasn't broken things off with Marcus. Ben asks if she wants to go kayaking with him, and she hesitates, worried it might be too romantic, but he promises her it's entirely professional. Mary is taking down posters in town as they pass through, disappointed because the steak and lobster she ordered for her party didn't make it past the flooded road. She's on the verge of tears, and Ben and Chloe promise they'll figure out a solution. First, though, they head out on the kayak, and Ben takes her to a local beach only accessible by boat. She's taking photos of the scenery, astonished by the natural beauty, and Ben says he's glad she likes his little corner of the world. They share some oysters, and Chloe shares her hypothesis with him, that the whales have changed their migration pattern to protect Betty, and that once the calf is born, they'll move to the sound with the rest of the whales. However, she can't prove it until she has evidence, which means waiting until the baby is born. Chloe suddenly takes inspiration from Ben's oysters, and remembers that Adrian and Shauna had more crabs than they knew what to do with. Mary won't have to cancel her dinner, because they can use the local produce to fill in for the missing food. They encounter Betty on the way back, who comes right up to the boat, to Chloe's delight. Back at the B&B, they explain the plan to Mary, who is relieved they've come up with a solution, and when Ben departs, she comments to Chloe that the chemistry between the two of them is undeniable, that everyone in the whole town can see they belong together. Chloe says she feels it too, but she's going back to Miami in two days. Mary tries to convince her that she belongs in Cable Cove, that she shouldn't go back, because what she and Ben have is special, and once in a lifetime. Chloe considers her words carefully, knowing that soon she'll have to make a very important choice. Ben comes to the museum later, asking if he can take Chloe's camera and use some of the photos she took for his website. She shows him the website she's working on for her thesis proposal, and says his stories about the kids in his sister's kindergarten class inspired her. He's amazed that he managed to inspire her, because he feels like she's been the one inspiring him all week long. He meets her eyes and asks her if he can take her out to dinner on her last day, and it's clear that this time it's a romantic invitation. She agrees, making up her mind. Then she calls Marcus, even though it's late, to tell him she wants to break up with him, but the connection's bad and she can't communicate with him properly. She hangs up, sighing in frustration. Finally, it's the day of the dock party, and everyone's busy getting everything prepared. Aiden will be playing guitar, and Ben and Chloe put up the decorations and sort out the tables. Later on, Chloe arrives at the party all dressed up and finds Ben. He's turned her photos into posters and put them up as decoration. It turns out that the tourists love them and have put bids in for them, which has raised a ton of money already. They have dinner around the table with Aiden and Shauna, laughing and drinking, and then get up to dance to Aiden's guitar. The two of them twirl around the dance floor, having a brilliant time, until he plays a slow song, and they both pause. Ben tentatively holds out a hand, and Chloe takes it, leaning into him and swaying with her head on his chest. The moment stretches out for a long time, both of them knowing how they feel but unable to acknowledge it. 
They hear a woman ask for napkins and go out to fetch some together, and Chloe pauses on the balcony, staring out into the night. Cautiously, Ben asks her what's wrong, and she explains that she's not ready for this to end. She needs more time. He sighs and says that usually he would keep to himself in the town, keep the same schedule, the same routine. But her arrival changed everything for him, and reminded him what it's like to share everything he loves with someone else. He reassures her that Cable Cove isn't going anywhere, and neither is he, and anytime she wants to come back to visit, he'll be happy to welcome her. Back at her cabin that night, Chloe contemplates everything she's experienced, and begs the night sky for a sign. As she says it, the northern lights flicker into sight, and she knows that Cable Cove is where she's meant to be. The following morning, Ben is tending to his boat when Marcus shows up unexpectedly. He tells Ben that his girlfriend Chloe studies fish, and he's rented a super yacht to take her out to see them. Ben gives him some advice about where to take her, feeling heartbroken that her boyfriend has turned up. Marcus goes to find Chloe and bring her down to the dock, and she's surprised to see him. He says he's come all the way to the back end of nowhere for her to win her back with a big romantic gesture, and that he's rented the biggest yacht in the harbor for them to go out and see the whales. Chloe says that she doesn't think they understand each other, that something just doesn't click with them. She knows he feels that too. Marcus sighs and agrees, he knows things aren't right but he wanted to try and fix them. Chloe says she appreciates it, and she knows he tried. But it's just not working and there's no point forcing it. Sadly, he smiles and says he'll accept it, that he can see she loves it in this town and he doesn't want to stop her being happy. He walks away, and Chloe smiles in relief. She's finally ready to tell Ben how she feels about him. However, when she goes inside, Mary informs her that Marcus told Ben he was taking her out on the yacht, and Ben's left without her because he didn't think she was coming. All the boats are already on the water so there's no way she'll be able to see the echo pod. That means she can't finish her research, so her scholarship application won't be complete. Devastated, Chloe returns to the museum and packs up her kit and maps, thinking she's missed her last chance. She looks at a photo she took of Ben secretly that day on the beach, and has to hold back tears. She comes into the lobby to check out and say goodbye to Mary. She thanks her, and Mary refuses to take any money for any of the extras, saying that Chloe's done more than enough for her that week. She asks her if she's not even going to wait and say goodbye to Ben. But Chloe shakes her head, knowing it's for the best if they don't see each other again, because without that scholarship there's no way she can afford to come back to Cable Cove. Mary promises her she'll always have a place there if she wants one. Just as she's about to leave, a mayday call comes in over the radio and they hear that Ben's in trouble. His boat has complete electrical failure, and he's taking on water. Aiden responds on the open line, saying he's starting up his engines and will be there as soon as possible. Chloe dashes out of the B&B, panicking, terrified that something's happened to Ben, and just about makes it to the dock before Aiden and Shauna's boat leaves. Shauna helps her on board. They head out as quickly as possible, Chloe scanning the horizon for any signs of life. They arrive at the location he radioed from, but he's nowhere to be found. Chloe's sobbing and looking everywhere with her binoculars, and finally they see his boat drifting helplessly by the shore. They pull him on board, and while Aiden and Shauna set up a tow, Chloe pulls Ben aside and explains everything about how she's broken up with Marcus, because as soon as she met him, she realized what it's like when everything just fits. He says he feels it too, that everything with her is so easy and fresh and exciting. She says that she belongs in Cable Cove, with him, and she knows that she loves him. He replies with a huge grin that he loves her too, and they share a passionate kiss, wrapped up in each other's arms, finally able to let their feelings show. Just then, the echo pod approaches, and they see that Betty's calf has been born. Ben holds Chloe in his arms as they watch them pass into the sound, proving her research hypothesis was correct. Back in town, she hears that she's got the scholarship, and is overjoyed, because it means she'll be able to stay in Cable Cove with Ben and conduct her research on the orcas. He's so proud of her success and kisses her deeply, sweeping her up and welcoming her home. 